This project I started with a 12 by 10 inch frame that I had picked up at a garage sale. Now I did not film the preparation of this frame, but I do prepare all my frames the same. I take the backings out, I take the clips out, I take the glass out, I clean everything up, and then I take Elmer's glue and put it around the perimeter of the back of the frame where the glass sits. Then I replace the glass and then I put Elmer's glue around the perimeter of the back of the frame, this time on top of the glass. And in this video here, I'm using clear Elmer's glue, but I have gone back to using regular Elmer's glue because I feel like clear Elmer's glue is um, too thin, too runny, and does not adhere the glass to the frame as well as the standard Elmer's glue does. So this serves two purposes. It helps to hold the glass in place and it helps to prevent resin leaks when you flip it over and put resin on the other side. Now this needs to sit to dry overnight, sometimes up to 24 hours, depending on how much glue you use. Next, I went on the computer and I found this angel under coloring book, free coloring book printables. And I brought it into Microsoft Word, copied and pasted it, enlarged it to the size I wanted, then printed it out, then cut it out and taped it to the back of the glass. Then I took Elmer's glue, and this is clear Elmer's glue I'm using, and put it around the perimeter of the angel, working with one area at a time. So here I've done the red dress. These are four millimeter rhinestone chains, and I put it on top of the clear Elmer's glue that I've just outlined the angel with. So um, when I'm done with this, I go ahead and I outline the wings. And again, I use a four millimeter rhinestone chain. This is a little different color. It's a gold, gold rhinestone chain. And these chains do need to be cut. And I have a um, heavy duty scissors that I picked up on Amazon. You'll see it with the black handle. I believe this would could be cut with the regular scissors, but I think you would ruin your regular scissors if you did. This is a real heavy duty scissors that I have. And just because the pattern um, follows a certain way, you can change it up if you want. I found it easier. I think there was four little um, divots on the bottom of each of the wings, and instead I made three. I thought that was a little bit easier. You don't necessarily have to follow it exactly. You can change it up any way you want. And then next, um, I took a two millimeter rhinestone chain and outlined the hair. Now, the order I'm doing this in, um, if I had to do it again, would be a little bit different. I ended up painting the hands and the face because I didn't want to cover them with glass. And um, that would have been the first thing I did after I taped the pattern to the back. So I kind of <clears throat> did this a little backwards, but I really didn't know what I was going to do for the face and the hands yet. And um, I do end up painting it, but I end up getting paint a little bit on the rhinestone. So that's why I would absolutely do the paint first. So then for the halo on the top, again, I used the clear glue and I used the four millimeter chain to create the halo at the very top. And then for the hands, I used the two millimeter chain and I go ahead and use the glue and outline it with the two millimeter rhinestone chain. Now here you see me painting the face and the hands. This is regular um, acrylic craft paint. Just kind of got a skin tone. You can um, do it any color you like. And um, the thing about painting on glass, it's more difficult than painting on a canvas, is that you have to um, paint each layer separately. In other words, you have to let the paint that you put on completely dry before you put on the next layer. And when you're painting on glass, you end up having to put like three layers of paint on. So you have to let it completely dry and then go back and do it again. And the reason you have to do that is because it will, if you go to put it on too soon while it's still wet, it will actually pull up the previous layer of paint. 
And again, I would have done this in the very beginning before I put any rhinestones on if um, I had to do it again. After you take the paper off, be sure to hold it in front of a window to look at the paint to make sure there's no um, real thin areas that you can see through. It's, otherwise, you have to give it another coat of paint. So make sure your coats of paint are thick. So then I started putting the face on. And honestly, if I had to do this again, um, well, I guess I en did end up taking, I think I ended up taking the face back off and then putting it back on. What I used was uh, the two millimeter crystal rhinestones. And I used the black for the eyes. I used four rhinestones each. And then for the mouth, I used five two millimeter crystal rhinestones to make the mouth and the mouth I shaped going up so it looks like she's smiling and the eyes down so it looks like her eyes are closed and then I put in Ashland decorative filler the red and yellow even though it looks gold the name of it is yellow if you're looking it up at Michael's it is yellow and I was kind of messing around with the hair here um I think originally I'd put some clear glass in it and then I ended up using the red or the red the gold beads and I did put some Elmer's glue down first so that the beads wouldn't pop all over the place but it looks like they ended up doing it anyway and that's why I ended up taking the face back off again because the beads were in there and I was messing up the the face so um, my suggestion would be the face um, is the very last thing to do. And my other suggestion um, is if you don't want to use the rhinestones, you could, of course, paint the face on. It would be simple to make two black lines and a little red mouth for the angel. So anyway, the beads I used for the hair, and you could actually use beads for the body, too. Um, there's all sorts of things you could end up using. But anyway... Um, just make sure that the paint is um, not transparent. Hold it up. You want to make sure it's opaque. It would look funny if it's transparent in some spots and not in others. And um, here I am last minute just filling in the Ashland Decorative Filler. And it's ready for resin. And I'm using today is Art Resin. It's a one-to-one -one ratio resin that you mix slowly for three minutes to help prevent bubbles. I usually drizzle it over the glass first. Now, I don't know um, when I put the blue tape on. I guess I didn't show it in the video, but one of the other things you do after the glue dries is put painter's tape around the back of the perimeter of the frame, and that's another precaution against resin leaks. And the other thing is you always have to do your project on protective paper. Even though you have your uh, glass glued on and the painter's tape on there, you still need to have some type of a protective cover. Anyway, after I um, get the resin on the glass, then I usually take it and drizzle it along the sides and into the corners, smoothing it out with either the spoon or with a gloved hand. You know, they say the resin is self-leveling, but you really do have to push it up into the corners and along the sides and in all the crevices to make sure it's fully covered because if you don't, you are going to end up with some blank spots. Um, the other thing with resin is you really have to get down eye level to it and look at it from all angles because it's very hard to see residue in it when you're looking at it from the top and you'd be surprised what you can see from getting down eye level and then turning the project. Um, I usually use a toothpick to get anything out that doesn't need to be in there and, to, and also to move glass and things around. The toothpick works really well. When it's done, it needs to sit on a flat level surface overnight. Usually after 12 hours, you can touch it. Art resin takes a full 72 hours to cure at temperatures between 72 and 85 degrees Fahrenheit. And there I just use the little kitchen torch to get rid of the bubbles. Usually I wait about another 20 minutes and then reuse the, the torch because um, some of the bubbles you can't get rid of and as they move to the surface it's easier to get rid of them a few minutes later.
resins are different, you need to read the directions for your resin. Hey everyone, so this is my resin angel. I have um, three angels that I'm doing that are all similar. I'm doing this one with resin. I have another one tomorrow with Mod Podge, identical. And then without any of the rhinestone chain. So I really like these rhinestone chains because it makes nice, neat edges on it. But um, if you don't have the, the rhinestones or don't want to invest in it, you, um, you know, you don't have to, of course. So that rhinestone chain for 16 yards, it's, um, I think, or is it 10 yards? It's, I think it's like $15. So, it, you know, if you don't, um, want to spend the money, that's fine too. You can you just do it without the border on it, or you could use little beads and put them right around the border too. That's another idea instead of putting the rhinestone chain. Anyway, I think she turned out really cute. And the hair, of course, is made with the seed beads. And the glass is the um, Ashland Decorative Filler. And again, I've been telling you guys, this glass is actually called yellow. It's not gold, it looks gold. And I ordered the gold online and I got these bags of something that looked nothing like gold. They had um, actually a uh, silver reflection in it. And I, just, I brought them back to the store because, um, and I figured out that it's really called the yellow glass. So if you're looking for this color, cause this is what I did the gingerbread men in also. So um, that's what you have to order. So anyway, I think she turned out real cute. It was a simple project, and um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you want to be notified of future videos, go ahead and subscribe. And I hope you all have a great day. Thanks for watching. <laughs>